Well, happy Sunday. Welcome to the Breakaway Podcast. You know who I am? I'm John Roots. We got another crazy good Sunday conversation, this time with my good friend Lily Stanley. She was a pole vaulter at Grand Canyon University. And you know what we stand for here at Breakaway and Turning Point USA? We stand by our values and convictions. Obviously, we live in a world where we're on the opposite end of the spectrum. We don't align with a lot of people, but at very least, we want to have discussions. And we don't want to be canceled by just sticking to our true American values. And she's someone that has to sacrifice a lot. And she was able to find a light at the end of the tunnel. It's very encouraging to me, you know, hearing this story before we even jumped on the podcast. And I hope it's encouraging and empowering to you as well. It's going to be something solid for, you know, other collegiate athletes out there. Maybe you're thinking about jumping into college and you're thinking, I have these conservative values. Should I be silent about them? If I speak up about them, will I lose my career? Will I lose some friends? This is someone you need to listen to and someone that's going to give you the tools and resources to fight back and stand for something. Upon further ado, Lily Stanley. There's obviously craziness you had to deal with with COVID. Mm -hmm. There's such a hyper-politicized atmosphere that you're involved in on college campuses. And you had to make a sacrifice. And I think we need to hear more stories like yours because you're one of, unfortunately, many across the country that have had to deal with these kind of things. Can you give people a little bit more of a breakdown of your time on the track and field team? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, mean, we all know that what happened over the past two years really hit young people pretty hard and particularly all athletes in general. So being a collegiate athlete while having to navigate this entire new world ended up costing me my sport um, and a lot of people uh, different aspects of their life. Basically what happened with me, uh, I was a division one pole vaulter here at a local university, Grand Canyon University. And Something I would never, ever do. Like, <laughs> I, I, could, like I tried that one time in high school, and yeah. I, I thought that was the end of my life. No, it's <laughs> tough. It's Let tough. me be clear. It is not an easy sport. I mean, pole vaulters also know and talk very openly about how we have no idea what we're doing. Like, it, it is totally bizarre. It's very anti-natural. But anyways, um, I was very close with my coach. I looked at him like a second father. He was always a very rational um and very nice influence in my life. He was great. He was very there for me and the rest of the team. And then a switch flipped when we ended up having to leave campus in March of of when the virus hit. And a lot of things, I mean, I know everyone was kind of in freak out panic mode. Nobody knew what to do, how to handle it. What What is too safe? What mm-hmm. is not safe enough? And uh, I think that showed our humanity a little bit. Like right when it hit, we didn't know. Like, right. It's, it's almost what goes through our mind is, I mean, I feel like I've seen shows and movies like this. And I want to yeah. make sure like my friends and family are okay. And I just don't really know like how much this is really going to affect me individually or this is going to affect my family or what it looks like career wise. So I think rightfully so a lot of people were just like, all right, let's just try to figure this out. There's things that are more important than athletics, but I think we found out pretty quick yeah. what this turned into. Yeah. I mean, people always want to err on the side of caution, but I was always of the opinion that you can err on the side of caution until it messes with people's liberties and rights and freedoms. And for some reason, we just kind of gave all of that up in this whirlwind of confusion. And so I had a problem with a lot of the protocol that was being implemented because it didn't make sense. It was uh, hypocritical. Things, places we could go or couldn't go that weren't synonymous. Like, you know, you can't be within six feet of each other, but then you can go hang out in your dorms with each other unmasked and that kind of. Or you just go to a college party. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can not use the convenient water station right here inside the training room, but you have to go on all the way three quarters of a mile down the building and use that one. So you're telling me there's there's different water stations that you guys oh, use. Oh, John, to, that's I mean, not this, even this, half this, of it. This sounds like the 60s almost where there's like segregation now where it's like certain people can use this or you can't use that. You right. Be- so one of my favorite protocol was... Um, the you had to shower before coming into the training room post practice protocol. So get this. So you can come into the training room before practice, mm-hmm. do your prehab, whatever, go have your practice outside in 115 degree Phoenix, Arizona. And then you had to shower before coming in to get rehab. Because I guess your sweat inside the building is different than the sweat outside the building. And then you come in and you cross contaminate. But me not living on campus, I don't have a shower on campus because they also shut down 
the university locker rooms, right? So, and <laughs> I'm also, because I don't live there, not allowed to go to other people's dorms. So I was completely exiled from being able to get any sort of rehab after practice, unless I wanted to drive home to my household 30 minutes and back to get my ankle taped. And if you know anything about athletics, like you can't ice a shoulder before jumping, you'll rip it out of its socket. Of so uh, I kind of played devil's advocate on the big COVID Zoom calls we would do, and I would just ask these questions. So you're telling me if I break my ankle while running, I can't come inside until I've showered to get it taped up? Okay, is somebody going to be next to the pole vault pit to wipe down my pole before giving it to somebody else? You know, like, because... So were these, like, Big West rules? Because that's the Big West, right? That's what GCU's a part of? Or the Mountain West? No, me? we're we are in the WAC. West okay. Athletic okay. Conference. So it's funny. I started to reach out to other schools in our conference for comment because I was confused. And I was literally the only athlete asking any sort of questions. And kids mm -hmm. were coming up to me like, dude, thank you for asking these questions, et cetera. I'm like, listen, somebody else has got to start talking or I'm going to get very exhausted. And then we get there one day and my pole vault coach decides that the pole vault team, the 12 of us, we're going to be the ones to wear the masks outside running and jumping in 115 degree heat. Nobody else, not the sprinters, not the hurdlers, the pole vaulters had to do it because he said we want to do everything we can to say that we weren't the ones transmitting anything. But by the way, go to a party that weekend and don't let them know and you'll be fine. So that and was what when was this exactly like how many months was this after the pandemic hit? And then you guys were able to go back and practice. <sighs> Let's see. This was after we took off in March and this was about the following February, January. So okay. it had been about a whole year into COVID. And that was I really- I mean, that's after data came out that talked about transmission outdoors. Correct. You already oh, saw yeah. the, like, the Fauci emails and everything talking about cloth masks. Right. So now I'm starting to get really pissed off because now we're you're forcing me into doing something now that- not even uh, like that nobody else has to do and we're outside and we're it's an individual sport it's not like we're touching batons or anything we're just running 30 meters outdoors it's so hot i can hear my heartbeat in my ears and i can't breathe mm -hmm. it just was so absurd and then one day our athletic trainer comes outside and she's like hey guys we're going to switch the testing method from the normal pcr test to the 15 minute test even though we're not traveling and we don't need 15 minute results. And these guys on our team are freaking out. They're like, hey, we did this test the other day. It's so painful. It hurt really bad. Brayden started bleeding out everywhere through his nose. And so all yeah, stuff. that's the nasal one where they have just like the long. Right, uh, the, yeah. the ones that <laughs> you're actually supposed to go to like down your throat, but they were going up too high because they tape ankles. They don't, they, these aren't nurses, right? So anyways, they said that this was what they were gonna do. The kids on my teammate, or the kids on my team who'd already done it said we will like do everything in our power to so never specifically do that again. is this GCU Grand Canyon University deciding this or that's coming down from the conference that say like conference wide no, this, wide, was this is GCU what we're doing. who decided to do this because I started talking to other athletes elsewhere and they were doing spit tests things that weren't very abrasive and now we're having to do the long swabs and so I asked I'm like, and my trainer made a joke uh, like you don't push back on this or I'll shove it up there harder. That's literally what she said. So I'm mortified because you tape ankles mm -hmm. for a living and now you're poking people's brains and now it's funny. And so I talked to my coach and I said, hey, listen, I'm not being not a team player. I want to be here. I want to practice with you guys. I love this sport, but my body, my choice, I want the original test and not that test. It's unnecessary for me to have 15 minute results when I'm not traveling. Because it's also like explain to me why this test is going to be a lot more accurate than this other test. And through the like grapevine, I found yeah. out it was a lot cheaper. So now we're abusing the students with this for results that we don't immediately need because it costs less money. So I told my coach, I'm not doing it. You can get me the other test. Uh, they dismissed me from the team that day. They said, don't come back here until you're tested. And, and we figure this out. So now I'm being discriminated against for not, not wanting to be a team player. I was all in it. I just said that's unnecessary for me and my health and what we're doing here. So that sucked. I left and 15 emails with the AD later, I was granted the opportunity to have my test. <laughs> and he said, don't tell anybody, keep it super low key. And I was like, I'm gonna tell everybody. <laughs> yeah. I told everyone, I'm like, listen, you can take control of your body 
and force them to do what's comfortable for you because you're the student here, et cetera. So anyway. You know, also, what kind of leader is that? Where it's like, okay, no, like we'll do this little exception here. Like, thanks for pushing and being it was persistent really about this. Up. Like, yeah. and hopefully a lot of people don't ask about it because I feel like that's what it came down to is you had leaders that just cowered. Yeah. And it sounds like you had a lot of people that that's what's so crazy about this whole time. It just turned into this whole moral conundrum that like, just do this because this is the best for everybody. And I'm sure, especially being right. at a Christian college, you had a lot of people that are falsely telling you what love is. This is the best way to love one another. Oh, right? Well, that's what my coach turned it into. And that was what was so bizarre because I had such a great relationship and then literally a switch flipped and he turned into a totally different person with this stuff. The language he would use about, you know, we're doing this because we want to be the people that can say we didn't have anything to do with transmission and this is the best way to be a teammate and all of these emotional plays that weren't rooted in any sort of numbers or mm -hmm. anything realistic so long story short i ultimately ended up getting COVID on their watch and then they turned me into like a science experiment where i had to give ekgs and blood work every week for the rest of my time there at gcu being an athlete with them if you get COVID, this is how you handle it now we need to track your blood and your heart and i what? just said listen <laughs> i'm a healthy individual i recovered just fine thankfully I'm not doing that. This is too much for me. So I ultimately ended up having who to- pre Who presented that though? Like basically, yeah, you are, a, you are a, a lab rat at, at that point. Lab rat. Like what? Blood work every week? Are you, s absolutely not. I was already weary of the first blood work I had to give just to get there. I mean- And then also who's gonna be performing that? Do you have people that are actually in like the nursing, is there a nursing school? There is, now, that, that's all fine. I just thought it was so bizarre. I don't, I'm also <laughs> just weird. I don't know where those samples are going. I don't know what they're doing with them. Yeah. I don't know what data they're extracting. I don't know what lab they're going to or what they're gonna be used for. It just made me so deeply uncomfortable, the whole thing. And then on top of all of the scientific discrimination I was having. We had just got done with Floyd Palooza that summer, and I had a ginormous target on my back for being an overtly conservative individual on my social media. I had my captain posting things, my captain, my NCAA four-time champion captain tweeting, if you're friends with Lily Stanley, block me. Crickets from my coaches. Nothing. No help. Told I wasn't allowed to wear my Turning Point merch to practice, but he was allowed to wear a Black Power Olympic shirt on the field. Like just blatant double mm. standards. So it became a, an extremely toxic environment for me. Uh, no support from my team. Everyone ostracized me. I would literally have to run to people on the track to have a face-to-face -face conversation with them because they had group chats about my stuff. None of them followed me, but yet they were still all commenting on my stuff and seeing it before anybody else did because mm. they tracked it like I was some sort of beast. So it, and it then just, what was there like a triggering point though when it came to because obviously mm -hmm. like social justice was pushed a ton was there an aspect of like Lily Stanley didn't post a black square or did she, you had something specific to oh, say yeah. or, or I what, mean, it was, what happened it was definitely my opinions about BLM Inc the organization and mm -hmm. um, some of my best my best friends kids I had housed throughout the year people I've slept in the same vicinity with and fed that now. Now I'm a racist and all this stuff because of my view on the organization as a whole. And unfortunately, my interpersonal relationships with them didn't translate to that's not the case in their head. So I would try to have those conversations with them. And before the season even started, I got a message from a teammate who said, you know, we're sending a representative to go to lunch with you. Find time on your schedule because we want to hear what your views are to see if we can exist on the same track as you this year. I was mortified. I felt so bad because I, I, I was so desperately, they didn't realize like we're all literally and emotionally and spiritually, I'm on the same team as you guys. I want what's best for you. I don't think this organization has your best interest in mind. So trying to have those conversations with a group of people that of course live very different life than me. I mean, it was tough. It was hard emotionally. So did you emotionally. say yes to that meeting then? I did, yeah. I did say yes to that meeting and it went great. And the poor kid was like, dude, I think this is all crazy. Da, da, da. But you know, I'm trying to help my brothers out and all this stuff. And I'm like, listen, I, you can tell them 
I love them to death. Nothing has changed here. You guys are still welcome in my household and please encourage them to have a conversation with me. Please. None of them did. My stuff got stolen out of my locker. Three weeks into my job here, my tires got slashed. Uh, all of them blocked me on social media and my coach had the audacity. Your, your tires got slashed. My tires got slashed in this parking lot. Oh yeah, th straight through the tread, a three inch slash. Mm -hmm. Don't know who. I have suspicions. I have nothing confirmed, but I, I kids had made light jokes about it on the track and stuff where, I mean, I, I'm not going to say that that's what happened, but I, I can almost say that, that I know who did it. Yeah. And obviously too, like this isn't a, a place where you know it seems a little purple right now i mm -hmm. think it's still probably a little bit more conservative than people give it credit for here in phoenix arizona just arizona as a whole and this is a christian university <laughs> where you should have people in the tippy top that should be standing up for you or standing up for at least diversity of thought or at least leading in some sort of way that says like this right. kind of stuff this division can't happen Especially if you consider yourselves childs of God, like your children, of, children of God, where it's like, hey, we right. got we got to figure this out. We might not agree on a, a few things here, but but you are a team. And it, for me, like hearing stories like this that are, are shocking. And I know I've shared this on uh, different podcasts. I know I've talked about it on the couch at TPUSA Live. Like I graduated in 2015. Mm -hmm. I didn't have to deal with the uh, Trump Clinton election at all didn't have to deal with being involved with this whole like social justice <sighs> nonsense like in in college a mm -hmm. lot of the stuff was post-college and obviously there's a lot of people like i've lost a ton of friends and i've had tough conversations but i wasn't in this place where everybody is on the same uh jesus team like mm. you said everybody seems to be on this faith journey together everybody's on this journey to try to win a conference championship everybody's yeah. trying to get better at their specific event and you have not only disagreement but you're being poked and prodded mm -hmm. that's actually poked and prodded uh literally colin, colin kaepernick so if you want to know what that is, uh, that's what happened to lily here <laughs> and um you know, tires are being slashed um, there's absolutely nothing to do with science here. It's crazy. I had to get campus crazy. security involved because kids were telling me that they were going to come curb stop me on my university. Like, it was getting really bad. My, like, this, these are, like, comments online? Or? These were public Twitter posts. People saying, like, talking about how they were going to gang up and find me on campus. And I told my coach, and he just batted an eye. I mean, it was so... I mean, you must have not even felt safe to go to practice or go to school. No, and I ultimately had to stop. And, and I don't even attend on, on campus anymore. I'm all online. And, you know, we were talking a little bit about the show about the sacrifice that you have to make for maintaining your morals and your ideology. And unfortunately, mm -hmm. not only, I mean, it costs everybody their friends. I mean, we know that. But more than that, I mean, it costs my sport. It costs my passion, something I was born to do. And... It ultimately really tainted my opinion of universities. I mean, I, you hear about all this stuff. Conservatives are always talking about the crap that happens on university campuses and whatnot. I never thought it would be my Christian university. That's why I went there. That's why I paid tuition there and took that opportunity over other state schools, ASU, U of A, elsewhere. Because it, it's supposed to be a, a Christian university, and that, mm -hmm. that means something to me, yeah. at least. So it was very interesting. Um, fortunately, I found a home here where I'm able to be valued and utilized uh, to further a more impactful purpose than just a state championship. But it was unfortunate, and I'm sure you understand a little bit about an identity crisis that happens post being a collegiate athlete and working so hard for so long for something, and then you wake up and you don't have a practice to go to. You don't have a training room to be in. You don't have that immediate community. And it's like you have to reinvent yourself almost. You have to find something else to be passionate about. So, mm -hmm. And I think too, there's this, there's this aspect of sacrifice that I'm glad you bring up. And uh, I feel like that's been on my heart a little bit more recently mm. uh, because I mean, there's times where you just, I mean, I wasn't blatantly out here to join Turning Point and be open about my conservatism yeah. along with my faith that I wanted to just like sacrifice friendships. You know, there's a lot of times where like, I, I think I'm pretty much a overly optimistic guy. I've become definitely a lot more pessimistic over the two years plus is <laughs> Crazy like, how that and, happens. and it's, it, it's just happening to everybody. 
But I, I mean, I've had to sacrifice so many aspects of my career. Mm-hmm. Like even recently, like I've I've been connected with with some companies that I've done work with for years. And, you know, you just get those emails that are just like, hey, thanks so much. I know we were planning on working with you, but uh, we made a little little change here. And there's um, and then so much for the party of inclusion and tolerance. Right. Isn't that what's funny? Yeah. Like it's never us ruining those friendships or burning those bridges, whether it's family or friends or jobs. I mean, I can't name a time where I've ended a friendship or unfollowed someone or done something like that over a political worldview. Because we're, it's not in our heart that it, yeah. we're not totalitarian like that. I'm so sorry that it ended up having to cost part of your career like that. It's just bizarre. But at the same time, too, there's a sense of like sacrifice that we have to know. Like for mm-hmm. me, I'm I'm not super shocked about a lot of this, and I knew going into this here, like me joining Turning Point was a lot. It was a lot mm-hmm. for me already to, you know, be talking and being very open about my faith mm-hmm. when I was working in the San Francisco Bay Area. Mm-hmm. Where it's like, hey, if you if you talk about your faith, like there is a target. There is a target on my back and I kind of enjoyed it because I'm like, hold me to a different standard. Mm-hmm. But now there is a uh, political target yeah. now that like I it's not that I just disagree with you. It's I want you to lose jobs. I'm not going to be interacting with you anymore because I think just you are right. so opposite end of the moral spectrum that you, you're even lucky that I'm I'm talking to you right now. Right. Like so it, the like prerequisite sort of for positions becomes your ideology and not your qualifications. Mm-hmm. We've seen that with like either Delta Airlines or different jobs or whatever. Uh, sports now, too. It's what type of person do you espouse on social media before it's your athletic ability, before it's your broadcast resume? Those are the types of the social badge is what they have to find first before even giving you the time of day. And I think that's something that is not going to go away in our Mm -hmm. society anytime soon. And we know that as Christians that that's what's going to happen. But it seems more so now It's not even religion that ultimately divides people anymore. What really breaks the camel's back is this political stuff. Oh, yeah. Because, like, I know for me, I don't want to be remembered as, like, some uh, solid voice in the conservative movement. I want to be known as someone that reflected Christ well, as best as he possibly could. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go up to the pearly gates and I'm going to have up there to be like, you know what? A couple of these conservative points here, I, I really enjoy that a lot. It's like, no, how do you reflect, reflect Christ? And that's what I want to be remembered as. But like right now, people, like whether you're religious or not, you're being persecuted for your politics. Yeah. No doubt. And it's wildly uncomfortable. And I think a lot of it comes down to we need to have more identity conversations with people that you knew that you were taking a stand that could cost you your career. Mm. It could cost you some friendships and, and everything. You yeah. knew that. Doesn't mean that it's not difficult. But you talk about this sense of reinventing yourself. Man, I I knew that a lot of my identity was in sports for for a good while. I I was never just like a unbelievable athlete, but I was always just a guy that lettered in three different sports mm-hmm. in in high school. I was always like well known. I was able to go play in college, play at Azusa Pacific University there. And then once I got hurt a couple of times, I think my identity started shifting a little yeah. bit because I'm just like, all right, well, I'm just a punter. Like I can't take myself as serious anymore. I got a job to do. Mm-hmm. And I figured like I'm, I'm pretty good at this, but I'm not sure if I'm going to go to the league, but I want to get, I want to go professional as something, something else. So yeah. I got into broadcasting and then I, I really enjoyed that at Azusa Pacific. You know, I was broadcasting, doing play by play for different games. Mm. I was helping start the on campus news station. And then I had a really successful career and I still consider it unbelievably successful now and very blessed. I had to reinvent myself after the pandemic, but I went through a major identity crisis. Yeah. And I think that's where more people need to be open about that. I found so much identity in what I was doing in the Bay Area. Yeah. Like every single time I went out to San Jose or Campbell, you're like, oh, are you the Sharks guy? Mm. And it's like part of those two. It's like I enjoyed meeting new people, but that started getting to my head a little bit. Mm-hmm. And obviously I always wanted to glorify God through what I did. But I started to realize like, wow, I'm finding a lot of like value mm. in that. And then when it gets ripped away, oh yeah, I, I, I feel like, isn't that who I'm meant to be? He's right. like, I'm, I'm supposed to be this person with the platform that like people ask like, why are you smiling all the time? Like, why are you always like so, so happy? And then I got to have different conversations with people. It's like, cause I love Jesus and he provided me this platform. And then now mm-hmm. I don't have it. 
am I really going to be able to make a difference? And I think right. that's what people need to know. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen maybe in a few months or a year. It might take a while or maybe, you know, that that aspect of your career might be taken away and you might have to jump into something else. Right. Um, and that's what's so tough for people now. Like, what hill do I die on? And for you, like you, <sighs> you decided like, that I, I'm going, I'm going all out. Whether anybody joins me or not, I'm, I'm going to send it. Yeah. I mean, that's ultimately what I had to do. And it really caused me to look introspectively to what do you really believe? What do you believe so true that you're going to live out? And what do you believe so true that you're going to live out that you're going to not compromise on? There was like a tier system where, you know, you have to, f especially if you're going to go that bold with something. I mean, we know as we, we have targets on our back, but it really gave me the opportunity to have those conversations with people about it because mm -hmm. now I have to be able to back it up because my yeah. biggest pet peeve is talking to these kids on my team and I'm like, well, why, why, why? They got nothing. They don't know what they're talking about. And I'm like, well, I have X, Y, and Z for why this makes sense to me. You, crickets. Because I mean, uh, we're going into these conversations to try to understand people and right. like get to just some basis of like what we're all searching for is truth. Mm -hmm. And we're, we're searching for some sort of logic where too many people they muddy the waters with this is my personal experience like someone that has a bad personal experience with law enforcement like we are going to empathize with that mm -hmm. um someone that has you know a terrible experience like losing a loved one because of covid like covid's real yes. racism is real right tough interactions and deadly interactions with law enforcement happens. But like, if you're going to try to conflate an o your own personal experience with and painting with a broad brush, like this is what the happens everywhere. It, it gets into my truth, yeah. no doubt. And the big thing we, we talk about here is like, this is ruining sports. It's ruining teammates relationships. It's ruining athletics programs across the country. And yeah. we, like sports used to be the ultimate unifier. Mm -hmm. And then now there's so much injected into these athletic programs and allowing leaders like your captain or your team to just run rampant, say whatever the heck she wants, because it sounds like coaches, no checks, athletic no directors, right. they're, they're terrified because it's like, you know, this is that black girl saying this. Like, well, and it, they're, like, yeah, they're, val they're, they're valid in their truth. This new thing that yeah. our society has done is we have put on a pedestal people's individual truths. There's no such thing as objective truths. As Christians, we understand there are night and day, black and white, absolute truths yeah. in this life and in this world. The world doesn't see it that way. It's It ebbs and flows. It can be this way today and that way tomorrow. And I think that's caused some real problems. And that's, that's what's obliterating all these industries. I mean, so far as now we have conflated gendered sports. We don't even have male versus female sports anymore and now it's just get on a team do your thing and if everybody else suffers at least you're living your truth at least you're being val like verified and everybody else it costs them everything we're going to take a quick break from this incredible conversation to talk about food mm, food's a huge part of the sports experience what if you could buy food you need for that watch party and donate to tbusa without even leaving your home incredible right now you can do good with good ranchers and eat good. They sell 100% American meats, and they believe so much in what we're doing right here with Breakaway and Turning Point USA. They're going to donate $50 to TPUSA on your behalf when you purchase some good meat from them. Good Ranchers delivers steakhouse quality beef and chicken and seafood right to your door. And with our code TPUSA, that's T-P-U-S-A, you can donate $50 to our mission while eating delicious food. Nothing better than that, right? Head on over to GoodRanchers.com slash TPUSA today. They got ribeyes, New York strips, gourmet burgers, and so much more good stuff. Order now with promo code TPUSA, T-P-U-S-A, and $50 will be donated to our mission of sharing and preserving true American values. Go to GoodRanchers.com slash TPUSA to get a box today. Once again, that's promo code TPUSA at GoodRanchers.com slash TPUSA. Do good while you eat good. Mm. I'm glad you bring that up because I know this morning as, as we talk, I was reading the Sports Illustrated article yeah. about Leah Thomas, and mm. I'm going to pull that up right now. There's a few different quotes that I'd, is a wild I'd love article. to hit on, but it's one of those things where 
it's been turned into this Leah Thomas issue instead of a we have biological men that are ruining women's sports mm -hmm. issue. And so often they try to turn this into, I know there, there's aspects of this where they tried to say that this is basically just right wingers that are trying to push back here and that anybody, so this is, this is what it said. So um, Thomas's story, this is from that Sports Illustrated article, Leah Thomas's story has become a right-wing obsession, a regular topic of discussion on Fox News. So obviously they're going to say just like you taint say, it. yeah, they're going to taint it. They they're say Fox, the Fox right News there. triggers somebody. Because I'm say, sorry, that's also not the case. True. There's plenty of other, not uh, there's a lot of there's been a few feminists that have come out, like plenty of lefties. I mean, ultimately, I think it's a left-wing position. I mean, if you look at the uh, at the women's rights movement, that was about women and protecting women and so that's ignorant of them to just paint it as a right-wing problem but I mean, that's the, what they're going to say is like well we are protecting women like leah thomas is a woman that's that's what they want you, that's what they want you to think and that's how they're going to try to um get this across and then what he goes on to say is conservative opinion sites have called her a man and dead named her so dead named her saying uh her old name and purposely using that name she went by before transitioning her moves have been minutely tracked by uk's daily mail mm. including once uh, this is this is what was absolutely insane to me this specific line here including once with cruel detail about her habits in the women's locker room provided by an anonymous teammate remember when this used to be known as sexual harassment, harassment? or assault they, they talk about like there's actually teammates here it's like they're, they're Male not. genitalia is in the women's locker room here. Like identify like now they don't. That doesn't mean anything. Your opinion, your feelings are not valid anymore because we have a bigger social justice elephant in the room. Yeah, that's and we've talked about this a little bit where, you know, the left is so funny because they'll they'll run into these intersections of all these problems and mm. they end up just picking the side of the most vulnerability or the most emotional reaction. So those people's feelings now it's not believe all women. Now it's believe the woman with the most crap on her back. So now Leah mm. Thomas gets everything catered towards her, despite what the other girls are saying. Their opinions aren't valid anymore because we have to cater towards the one who's portraying the victimhood at the cost of everybody else. Not only records, spots on teams, all that, but I mean, mm. the emotional damage that this is doing to young girls, I mean, I just... The transgender sports yeah. issue is something that I just think is so bizarre and backwards and there is no logical or scientific explanation for it. I mean, you want to talk about following the science? They've made it an entire emotional issue and it yeah. has nothing to do with emotions. And it goes back to the, well, my truth trumps science. Yeah. It's incredible. And that's why, like, even you have parents that are stepping up here, like a lot of these athletes are terrified to say anything like just it goes along right. with, with your story i get it where there is there's not a lot of lily stanley's out there there's probably just a handful of you out there that just feel unbelievably empowered and so <sighs> convicted to yeah. stand up and be willing to lose something that some of these parents have to step up and say something i know in this article some of these parents are quoted saying we support leah as a trans woman and hope she leads a happy and productive life because that's what she deserves so like people always yeah preface it like that we're not saying that she should just be ostracized from society or put into like some sort of like leper colony. That's what the left wants you to think. It's like all these conservatives and right wingers. Like, no, this is about integrity. This is about fairness. This is about morality. This is about science. And they went on to say, um, so this is one parent said, what we can't do is stand by while she rewrites records and eliminates biological women from the sport. If we don't speak up here, it's going to happen in college after college. And then women's sports, as we know it, will no longer exist in the country. It's so sad. I mean, I, women fought. It was, <laughs> where are the feminists? I mean, the same ladies who fought new so hard for women to be able to be equally represented in sports and have a team and be able to compete because we can't compete alongside men for mm -hmm. many reasons beautiful reasons not anything to be resentful of just I even mean, talk about pole vaulting like you could have the very best pole vaulter i'll tell what, you going exactly against, what it yeah. is i because i studied it the top male pole vaulter the the next the, the number one female pole vaulter doesn't come within a thousand and twelfth a thousand and twelfth on the record sheet, okay? 
So women, the feminists fought so hard for women to be represented, yeah. and now they're fighting so hard for men to be represented over women. It's bizarre. They have no integrity, and it is, it's an exploitation. I feel so, I mean, like, I'm grateful to have gotten out of it because I swear, I told all my male teammates, go identify as a woman and start taking titles and, team, and teams and stuff. Nothing's going to hold you back. You might as well. Maybe if we just infiltrate that industry so much, they'll realize how crazy they are for that it will just obliterate women's sports in every sport every single one i mean we've seen the mma mm -hmm. fighters die i mean what else has to happen yeah what is going to be the tipping point when every lane is a transgender athlete why can't we have a league for that i mean i i want her to have a normal experience like everybody else but it can't cost the livelihood of, of of the rest of the women. Because also, the too, there's no, like, specific guidelines right now. Like, How does right, she not Right see now, that? like, the NCAA is saying, like, oh, you know, there's, like, uh, just certain schools and then certain conferences and then there's, like, an overarching committee that sends it somewhere else and then they don't have a testosterone uh, requirement thing and mm -hmm. then the IOC is still trying to figure out what they're going to do. Honestly, if there's still, I know we talked to Erica Brown and Gabby DeLoof, uh, mm -hmm. some professional swimmers about this, yeah. people that have found a lot of success and been very vocal about what's going on here. They said like, I don't know if it's a transgender um, league. I don't know if it's just, uh, I mean, just, they do know it's just like stick to your biology because obviously there's just, it's not fair having somebody that is biologically a man being in women's sports mm -hmm. because think about it like why is it not flipped around why yeah, don't you show me an example show me an example of a woman a biological woman becoming a man competing as a man and winning against biological males this only hurts mm -hmm. women that uh, nine times out of ten i'm sure there's some exceptions out there for some freak naturally born female athletes who transition and end mm -hmm. up being able to smoke the boys but nine times out of ten this is only going to backfire on biological women they are the exploited group every single time yeah and that's why i feel like just pun intended this is a turning point in sports and yeah. we really got to figure out what we're made of here and either you're going to be too scared to say something that could potentially um, make you lose a couple followers or something, or you're going to stand up for women's sports that should be supported. Because mm -hmm. I think, I mean, I don't watch the WNBA, but I think it definitely is getting a little bit more popular. It's getting a little bit more respect because even mm -hmm. Becky Hamilton is going and I think she's coaching the Las Vegas Aces now. She's a fantastic coach. She was under Greg Popovich uh, mm -hmm. with the San Antonio Spurs. You have some fantastic athletes like Diana Taurasi. And then you also got... Um, you know, athletes in track and, and everything that, I mean, they should be supported. And yeah. then we had a, we have a great women's soccer team, but mm -hmm. there's been a lot of wokeness. Like people don't even want to support you anymore. Um, yeah. Like if your viewership wasn't low enough, you're not getting any sort of viewership now. Yeah. People don't want to talk about politics. They just want to watch sports. Sports used to be the one thing that could bring everybody together. Differences aside, it's an objective way to value people. Mm -hmm. And what, that's what's really cool about sports is for the it's longest time. It's a meritocracy. Time, it is the only time that objective truth will win. Can you hit the ball farther? Can you run faster? Can you shoot mm -hmm. it more accurately? Those are objective truths. And now, even in the Sports Illustrated article, it was talking about how, you know, she just keeps saying, like, I'm just here to swim. I'm just here to swim. I, I, I don't know. I think we've just absolutely lost our minds when it comes to this stuff. It's unfortunate the situation and the emotional turmoil that these people are in and I have compassion for that but it can't cost biological women their place mm -hmm. and you'd think they would get that <laughs> but I guess not <laughs> and that's why I'm excited actually going to be going out to the um, mm. NCAA championships for women swimming and diving out out in Atlanta we're going to get a little <laughs> crew together and definitely want to hear from some people uh, going to that event. That's awesome. I, I mean, I'm sure there's going to be some people that might might say just like blur my face out or, or something. Mm -hmm. There's going to be plenty of people there that are there to support their daughter, their sister, their friend, or just support women's athletics in general. And I know they don't agree with it. No, I think a lot of people, unfortunately, are... <sighs> It makes them deeply uncomfortable to be that far out of the box. I mean, people want security and safety so bad that they'll do things that they don't 
ultimately agree with in order to maintain that comfort. And I think that's a big flaw of our human existence. I mean, even the Israelites wanted to go back into slavery because at least they had meat, right? Human nature is not to be gung-ho about truth. It's to just do what's comfortable. And this is the result. This is what happens when good men do nothing or good women do nothing. You just obliterate things. Explain that then, because I think there's too many people that try to make this just a women's issue. Mm -hmm. And I think it's similar to uh, abortion talk too, Mm -hmm. where it's just like, don't have a uterus, shut your mouth. And it's like, well, I mean, stepping up for the unborn. (laughs) There's so many people. And obviously we don't need to get into like the whole abortion situation, but I think trying to just say there's only one i mean there's two genders so people need to start explaining that a little bit more too <laughs> where it's like oh no they can be whoever they want or there's so many different uh but, i mean the yeah the left is just full of fundamental flaws i mean even the no uterus no problem it's like didn't you guys just say that you didn't even have to have a uterus to be a woman now you can just be a woman so which is it it's these constant hypocrisies within the left and that's the goal pose i mean when you have no absolute truth when you have no black and white moral compass it's mm-hmm. just whatever you want that morning Doesn't so what would, what would you tell men that are out there that are just terrified to say something because for me I, I feel like i'm going to continue to talk <laughs> about this because i love what iowa just did they just signed well, a bill into law that said anybody that is a biological man you are not going to be able to compete in women's sports and it was and, and it's an incredible photo to see all those young girls uh, i mean yeah. from i mean just it seems like probably from like teenager on up and say, like, we want to protect women's sports and we want people to join us in yeah. this fight. And we need men to join us, too. What I would tell men is, unfortunately, the stakes are low right now. The stakes are low. You might be societally ostracized, but your daughter is not going to be able to compete in sports if you don't start talking. Mm-hmm. It will not be. This is not a sustainable trend at all. The fact that we've got it this far is remarkable because it only is going to get worse unless more states or more universities or more leagues start saying that's simply not going to happen here. It will take over and obliterate women's sports. So uh, same thing with being overtly political or being a conservative in your job and whatnot. I genuinely think the stakes are low right now. We as Gen Z or millennials haven't really been that challenged. We haven't experienced war like our our grandparents have or, or, right. or whatever. So when your life isn't on the line, I don't want to hear about the consequences that are going to come with you standing up for truth. Right now, it's just your brothers in the locker room. And that's got to not mean so much to you because you need to find some sort of real absolute value and truth that you believe in and start talking about it because otherwise you're going to fall for everything. And again, I would just encourage everyone, if it – causes conflict or confusion it's probably not the right opinion Mm. 10 times out of 10 (laughs) if if it doesn't feel right or make sense scientifically or emotionally it's probably not right so men have to get into this space and unfortunately the feminist movement has removed or invalidated all of their opinions Mm. but it's not the case it needs to happen a couple things as we wrap up i think people need to know they're going to war every single day whether they whether they believe it or not and obviously as Christians, it's like, that's why you put on the full armor of God yeah. and you're fighting for things that are just way crazier than, you know, CRT, social justice, nonsense, environmental justice, or, you know, what, whatever it may be, pronouns, transgender rights or something like that. People need to know you're going to battle every single yeah. day, but that doesn't mean that you should be out there just trying to absolutely just from either side of the aisle, you shouldn't just be out there just to try to just decimate somebody, just try mm-hmm. to kill like absolutely just kill them and their ideals like sure. try to like bridge bridge some of these gaps um but you are going to war and i think yeah. people need to know that there is sacrifice and there is hurt and there is pain in war and there's a war every single day and i think it people need to understand that they're in that fight last uh, last question i'd have for you is you were talking about some teammates before that were angry with you about what you had to say about BLM Inc. Yeah. They were angry about what you had to say about COVID and just standing up for bodily autonomy and basically just getting down to the truth. Mm. It's similar to what Joe Rogan said. A couple things that were conspiracy theories just about a couple years ago are now truth. People got deplatformed for that. People lost their career um, in college athletics. And now what you were saying is we knew it was truth before, but now for the masses, it's like, here you go. You even have people on your side of the aisle that yeah. are saying, 
what I was saying two years ago. That should be encouraging ha to people. Have you had conversations with them at all or w what's been happening since since well, that's come out? John, that I, I do, I try to, but it doesn't go over well because that requires a deep amount of humility and self-reflection that a lot of the people on that side of the aisle are not capable of because otherwise they probably would have at least heard what we had to say in the first place. Aristotle says that we are the speaking beings. There's only two ways to govern people. It's either through speech and persuasion or by force. If you're not able to have conversations with people, you're just dictating what they believe. We have to get back to having those conversations. I love to. I think it's great. I've never unfollowed or unfriended somebody because of their views. I actually mm. like to submerge myself in that so that I can understand what they're trying to even say because yeah. <laughs> it's so confusing to begin with. And yeah, I've tried and there's been a few people who have thanked me and said, you know what, I kind of, you know, truth sp spreads like a wildfire and believe it or not, it will resonate with them someday, whether or not they choose to acknowledge it. Human existence, the cognitive dissonance is to not accept that you've been wrong. And conservatives as well need to do a better job of just admitting like, hey, listen, you were right. I was wrong. I was ignorant. I didn't know that. And if the left would just do that even occasionally, I think we'd form a lot better of a bridge and um it's unfortunate i think that's that's what everyone needs to just focus on like you want to talk about being a better you this year talk about just admitting when you're wrong i mean like you said these things that have come out to be true and it's just swept under the rug and no one acknowledges it mm -hmm. and it's like oops we missed that <laughs> next big crisis when it's like mm -hmm. we should look at that and maybe you should stop ostracizing us from society and understand that we might have something valuable to say and at least listen to us so I'm thankful to have a conversation with you like this, and I wish more people would do it. Yeah, and I think people just need to reflect on both sides of the aisle, too. Just yeah. There's obviously people that have acted like they're on some sort of moral high ground that have ostracized you, tried to plague you as somebody that just isn't a real Christian, someone yeah. that doesn't really care about or love people. But you stood and had courage in your conviction. And I think pe more people need to hear stories like this. And hopefully it's encouraging and empowering for a lot of people because, yeah. I mean, if you don't stand for anything right now, you're probably not going to stand for anything at all later. That's what I'm saying. Stakes are low right now. You better get used to it because when they start coming and marking doors and all that kind of stuff that's going to happen, how are you going to be able to make those hard decisions then? You're not mm -hmm. going to. You didn't train yourself to do that. That's why you can't ever compromise on values or beliefs. You have to find them, soak yourself in them so you know what they are, and don't waver for them. And I promise you, they're not going to fall on deaf ears. No. People need it now more than ever. And it is our moral obligation to do so. And ultimately, this is going to help relationships, and this is going to help sports. This is why we have conversations like yeah. this. This is why we have Breakaway, <laughs> because, I mean, a lot of times, too, people just don't even have an outlet to talk about these things. I mean, I know you've you've tried to figure out, you know, how do I share my story? How do I maybe do this on my own, put my yeah. own, uh, other pieces of content together? Like here, I mean, we've had so many incredible people on the show and there's stories that need to be heard. And there's plenty of people I'm sure that are gonna watch or listen to this and like, you know what? I feel like I kind of have a Lily Stanley story mm. and I can appreciate that. And there's so many more of us than people think. <laughs> that was one thing real quick that was super interesting is these universities trying to make you feel like you're the only one. You're the only kid that's like this. You're the only unvaxxed. You're the only un whatever. The only one pushing back. It's not true. Mm -hmm. You know it to be not true. Yep. And the more conversations we have with people, we realize that's not the case. Amen to that. Well, this has been an awesome conversation. Appreciate you very much. Where can people yeah. follow you? Uh, on Instagram at Lily Stanley USA and on Twitter at Lily Stanley. America. I or love that. at my desk in the media department. <laughs> <laughs> What's well, great. It's honestly been a pleasure like hearing your story more and getting to know you and your heart behind Thanks. you know, loving sports, loving people and loving this country. Yeah. It's definitely been a huge inspiration to me. So I appreciate you taking some time to share this story. Everybody, we appreciate you very much. If you're not following us on Instagram already at TPUSA Breakaway, leave yep. us a review, subscribe, five star review please don't be like a couple of those trolls that we've seen with those one stars Just we want we want we want five stars uh, but we want to make sure that we're keeping these conversations going we are on apple and spotify we're on youtube and rumble appreciate you guys very much also to quick note we are taking a week off we're taking a nice little spring break <sighs> all right nice little time off so uh, you're not going to get a show on, on Wednesday, but we will be back refreshed and renewed mm. for the next week. It's going to be amazing. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm John Root. That's Lily Stanley. Peace. Yeah.